Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to tell you this game's with their time and bandwidth. Today's game is Persona 4 Golden, probably the most beloved of the franchise. Persona 4 Golden is finally out on damn near everything. Should you give this game a look? Persona 4 Golden is available on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, where if you want to buy it, it will set you back $20, but it is also available on Xbox Game Pass, and the game is about 80 to 100 hours to beat. So what exactly is Persona 4 Golden? Well, it's a blend of two genres, time management, social sim, and Pokemon-esque JRPG dungeon diving with an emphasis on elemental weaknesses, which is basically the same as Persona 3, except refined now and with a much more lighthearted tone. You play as a high schooler transferred to the small town of Inaba in Japan, living with your detective uncle and his young daughter. Shortly after arriving, a string of murders shocks the small town residents, which you quickly learn are related to something called the Midnight Channel, a show that appears on midnight on rainy days. It turns out that there's another world inside the TVs, a metaverse of thoughts and shadows shadows, and people are getting tossed in and killed by their personal shadows, which are manifestations of their darker selves and desires. It's up to you and your ever-growing high school crew to not only save people tossed in, but also uncover the mystery of who is doing this and why. The story's themes focus around self-acceptance, with characters needing to acknowledge their darker halves in order to unlock their personas and survive in the TV world. These themes are conveyed across all social links in the game as well, even more so than Persona 3, and ties in well to the adolescent experience of transitioning into understanding oneself. Oh, and the mystery on top of it all is very engaging, and as you can imagine, is a great setup for keeping things going. Gameplay-wise, this is basically identical to Persona 3 with some quality of life improvements. You'll still dungeon dive, but now in zones specific to each character's interferes rather than a continuous dungeon, adding some much-needed variety. Persona Fusion has also been improved so you can pick inherited skills. Additionally, the social links are stronger this time around and does a better job gating links with personal stats, of which there are now five. There's also a ton more to do during both day and night than in 3, and Golden added even more stuff on top of the base game so you'll always have something to do. But for those uninitiated, you'll essentially spend half of your time doing social activities as hanging out with friends and improving their social links makes it so that your personas, essentially Pokemon, will be powered up when you create new ones. Personas are used in the aforementioned dungeons through turn-based combat that emphasizes targeting enemies' weaknesses for bonus moves and more damage. And there's a ton more to Persona 4 Golden, but like the previous reviews in this series, I'm cutting it short, so hit that P5 Royal review or the P3P review if you want more details. Suffice to say, it's fundamentally similar to Persona 3 and 5, just with a lighter, mystery-themed story and some quality of life improvements. So what do I like about Persona 4 Golden? Well, the loop is just as addicting as ever, refining Persona 3 systems to a sheen that makes you want to play just one more day over and over again. And I think that the pacing of this game is also what keeps it very addicting. As while it has a slightly slow start, once you get into the guts of the mystery and interacting with the various characters, the story moves briskly from one exciting plot point to the next, keeping it incredibly engaging throughout. And lastly, this game has some of the most endearing characters I have ever seen in a- And lastly, this game has some of the most endearing characters I've seen in a video game, movie, or otherwise. They're all so well-written with charming interactions, character quirk, goals, and while some are a little anime tropey, the game goes above and beyond to give them depth. It's a cast that you're remember long after you beat the game. When it comes to the bad, I found a lot of this game's mechanics and systems are just lifted directly from Persona 3, which does make the game feel a little less original than its predecessor. Additionally, the investigation portions, where you basically have to talk to random NPCs in the hope that you'll be able to continue the game, is incredibly tedious, and I'm honestly surprised it made it into Golden. It is by far the worst part of the game. And lastly, this has been talked to death, but I am going to bring it up here. The LGBT subplots in this game do feel a bit dated. I was surprised that they did age better than I had expected. I honestly feel that would only take a few small changes fix a lot of this stuff, as the game's primary theme is self-acceptance, and if it had been done just a little bit better, the LGBTQ stuff could have really worked. As you know, right, games on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. Yeah, you should absolutely play Persona 4. There's no denying this game is chock full of heart, more so than almost any other game I've played. It's charming writing, heartwarming story, fantastic music and visual styles, and addicting gameplay all add together into one of the best games I have ever played and replayed. Even if you don't love JRPGs, you owe it to yourself to play Persona 4. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played Persona 4? What do you think about it. I was introduced to it thanks to the endurance run on Giant Bomb, so get out there and make sure you play it.